What's going on, peeps? I'm back underneath the car here. I had a comment by a guy, Jerry Big Rig. He was wanting to know about my shock mounts, how I have them underneath here. Well, they're mounted up here on two gussets on each side this way. Not the best weld job was when I first started learning how to weld, but they've held up. I haven't had any problems out of them, but two gussets on each side mounted to the shock. I got them on both sides like that. Here's another one up here. So he's saying the torque of the rear end and the suspension of the, or the load of the car when it's squatting down, when you accelerate, when you're taking off from the line. So what I've been reading is basically I get the light over here this time. Oops, there's something here. But these lines, I should jack the car up for this. Um, but those bars there is what's taken the torque from the rear end. When you hit on the gas, taking off the line, those two bars there are taking all the, the torque forward to push the car forward. So I think he was wondering, it does the shock taking all that? Well, if I didn't have those two bars in, then yeah, the, the shock would take a, all of it, basically. But since I have those two bars in there, which actually it's called a, f a four link, so that's what I have in it. So, get that set back up. But anyway, but yeah, that's the that's the setup I have. I'll show you some more pictures of kits that they sell just like this, and they sell the bar already with those two. Uh, four gas it's already in there and you just mount your shocks up to it but yeah that's the design I have and that's the way they do it uh, I'm underneath here because I got in the car the other day or yesterday actually to try to start it and my battery was dead so I had to get underneath here to disconnect the battery it's mounted underneath the trunk really low and that's what I'm doing now. I know in my first video I made a comment about uh, my first Camaro being stolen. I didn't really go into a full story about it. Uh, so I'm just giving you guys the pictures of the underneath so you listen to this story and you guys got something to look at as I tell it. But I lived with my parents when I was 18 years old and I came home one night and I always had to park it out on the street didn't wasn't allowed to park it in the driveway stepdad didn't want it in the driveway so parked it out front went inside grabbed something to eat watching television a couple hours later I went back to the front door to look at the car the car was gone um a girl lived across the street from us. She always had a boyfriend that always came over to visit her. Well, come to find out that's who stole it was him. Uh, he had it, like I said, for a couple months. They ended up pulling the motor training, full exhaust. I mean, they gutted it. Smashed all the windows, gauges out of it, and everything else like that. So, that's what happened to that car. When I got it back, they put it in the field, and some kids reported it to the cops, and then they came and got it out of the field. It was a wooded field. It wasn't like a wide open field, but kids were back there shooting it with their BB guns and stuff like that. It, 
shut out all the tail lights, turn signals, and stuff like that. I mean, all the glass was out of it, gone. So there, I went into the story about that, and how I found out about that was uh, it was word of mouth, I guess. I mean, as soon as I got the car back out on the road, one of the girls in the neighborhood said, "Well." What in that such and such vehicle? Um, yeah, wasn't that such and such vehicle? And they said, No, that's John's. He just got it back, it was stolen, and he just got it back and got it back together and put it out on the road. And she said, Well, such and such was driving it, um, a while back ago. So that's how I figure out who, who stole it. If that makes any sense, yeah. It's a tight spot underneath here. I tried to get a little bit better, but I couldn't. So, anyway. It's more of a setup. But yeah. Let me get out of here. Yeah, that's the story on that. Now, I did end up taking the battery out of the car. I, I don't know what killed the battery. I don't have a clue. I just it sits right down there. Clean all, clean all that up. I don't know what done it. I have no clue. Uh, on these optim Optima batteries you can't like hook a regular charger up to them. You have to trickle charge them. Um see how can I do this but this has been on charge for two days now or since yesterday actually Okay. Nine nine five. So was to a um, four volts. So yeah, I don't know. The car has no power in it at all until I until I turn the switch on so when I put my little key in here and turn it that turns the power on to the whole entire car except for the no it still turns it on to the computer box too so it's beyond me the battery's old There was a date on here at one time, but I guess not. But anyway. But I have a spare. Always have to have spares. Always. So I have another one. That one's good. This one's 12.8. Somewhere right around there. It's been sitting up on the shelf for... I guarantee a year, year and a half. So we'll go with that one for a little bit. I think that's the original one. That's, I think this is the one I actually did buy. This one I found inside of a car when I worked for a different company. So I'm going to get that in there. I hope that justified the suspension on the car. So... Let me get this battery in. And by the way, yes, I did get this all mounted up. I still have my ground cord, ground cable. 
yeah i got it all hooked in everything's good there uh, steering wheel straight tire straight did you get all that let me show you underneath If you guys hear the dogs, yeah, they're going at it. But yeah. Everything. Connected, tightened, greased. Re-greased the fittings underneath here, as you can tell. I need to clean this up here at the top. Get to that but yep this is all good some more grease hanging down back up top did get the bar welded in also got that all welded in all the way down just gotta paint it black now So I got all the hood pins readjusted. Batteries back in. I get everything tightened up. I love these fittings here. And like I've said before on a previous video, I do have a, a fuse box back here. It's powered 12 volts and a negative ground. So what you do is you add fuses here down one section and down another section and you can add, and then you just plug in. Let me get a light down to here. Then you could just add power sources in. You just plug them in at the top and then you can plug in gauges or whatever else you want instead of have to keep running off the battery. Well think this is just coming up to the switch so then one is to the computer which you got it you have to have directly to the battery with a negative so there's that one and that one I forget this is a fusible link comes over fusible I think that's running my line lock I believe the other one is probably running power over to that box. So yeah, but those are nice to have too. So you can run, you just pop a fuse in it on each panel or each circuit that you want. You just push a fuse in there and it's live and then you can connect a wire to it and go to town. So it saves all these wires coming off of one terminal over here. That makes sense to you guys. But yeah, I'll get all that. I, I have to clean up all this wiring in the back. I've just been neglecting it for all these years. But yeah, all that body work, all the dust down in there. Jeez, I need, I need to clean all that back out. So yeah. That's what I'm doing. But like I said, I got everything in, guys. and So I'm moving on. So let me get this thing running and I'll be back at you. Battery all hooked back in. Now see when I had the power on back there, I came in here. I didn't have any lights on in here, nothing like that. So I don't know what caused the battery to go down. Trans brake button. You guys can hear that clicking, that's good. Um, right here, line lock. It's clicking, that's good. So I don't know. Starter button here.
keep an eye on that battery. Definitely keep an eye on it. So I, I figured out, let me shut it back off. Something was going on with the battery. Let's see if the car's out here. Garage right, door is noisy as hell. But yes, okay. Dogs barking in the background. Aha. They don't want to be on here. But I changed the belt. Aha. Changed the belt on that. Oh my god. You guys don't want to be on on there. They didn't want to be on here. So anyway, that's her that's her daughter. This car, 2010 Nissan, I bought for three hundred dollars. Got wrecked in the front. And I totally redone the whole front of the car. If I can still find the pictures, I'll show it to you guys. But I had to put a uh, serpentine belt on that yesterday so when I done that uh, her daughter's boyfriend wanted to, his friend wanted to hear the car run so I went ahead and tried to start it and it had a dead battery so that's how I figured out what it was or what the problem was so yeah like I said I just don't work on this I got I work on the, I put a video of the jeep Jeep way back here did a thermostat on that one, and then I did a whole lot of something something to that. I don't touch her car, her car's brand new. Um, my 2015 Duramax, I had to change the DEF heater in the tank, and I put Dog, red big dog pump on it. I think it's the name of it. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh yeah. Uh, you guys can't see it. I have to bring a light out here. Sure, the filters are dirty. Gotta get those changed. But anyway, I put a pump on there. What's up? Auxiliary pump on there pumps the fuel from the tank up, and I think it's uh, CP4 pump. It helps pump the the fuel up. Hold on, garage door again. So it helps pump the fuel up from the tank up to that pump so it doesn't burn the other pump out i seen it on a forum and everybody was talking about diesels like that and it, i think it's called the cp4 I believe pump and it burns them up and it throws metal shavings out through the whole entire motor so if you buy that pump it, it'll prolong that a little bit longer so that's what i did and they aren't cheap but yeah that's what i did it's the only thing I had to do the the truck. Oh yeah, and I bought on the door handle side the door panel. It's missing the it's missing a little lock. It goes up and down. So I bought the whole rod. I haven't door taken the door panel off to get to that yet and see what's going on with it, but it is missing. That is only ten bucks. So. Not bad. I know. I need to clean all this crap up. Yeah. Like I said, I just don't work on this. I work on all the other things too that come up. I gotta keep everything going around here. So, like and subscribe to my channel. 
I do. I really do appreciate it, guys. See ya.